Recently, there's been a lot of talk uh, with full self-driving cars about the requirements of LIDAR. Now, I, I thought this went away. I thought, you know, in the industry, we all know that LIDAR is dying. But apparently, the public still thinks LIDAR is important. So, and some of this has to do with the fact that I know some of the Chinese cars have LIDAR on them. Um, you know, the, the Volvo EX90 was just released in the US with LIDAR, although they're not using it. So there's, you know, and of course, Waymo's got all kinds of LIDARs on it. So the question becomes, you know, why, why do you need LIDAR? Well, people are claiming that you need LIDAR to do full self-driving. Here's the thing. There's, and there's research associated with it. I'll, I'll link. I'll put a link to the research paper, and it's relatively recent. It's 23, the end of 23. But basically, the research shows that lidar is impacted by fog and heavy rain in a similar fashion as regular light. Okay, so I mean, lidar is using infrared light. Okay, so the the it, which is very close to regular visible light, which is what the camera is detecting, and what you'll find is you'll find some research that says, oh, LiDAR works great in fog, but there's a difference between the, the ability to, to transmit a signal and receive the signal and being able to actually use the signals, which the signals on a LiDAR unit is called a point cloud, and actually being able to use that point cloud to detect objects. What ends up happening in heavy or in fog, and I'm not going to say fog, in fog and rain is the LiDAR point cloud becomes extremely noisy. And the ability to use that point cloud now to actually detect objects becomes diminished significantly. So you got to be careful when you're looking at the studies and especially when you're looking at the the uh, the data from the manufacturers about are they actually talking about a single point? So are they claiming that a single point in the point cloud can get through the fog and come back? Or are they saying that they've actually solved the problem of noise in a point cloud? And I don't know if that's actually the case or not. The research in this particular research paper from the end of 23 indicates that they have not solved the problem of noise in a point cloud. And in fact, using actually using that point cloud from LIDAR to detect objects is significantly diminished in fog and in rain. Now, why is that? Well, because the LIDAR unit is using infrared light. It's using a, a light at a frequency similar to the vision system. It's in, in the same approximate range. Whereas 4D radar, 4D imaging radar, is actually using energy at a much lower frequency. So when, when you're using a sensor to measure the physical world, you, you, ha you have, you have two, two sides of the sensor, let's call it. On one side, you have the physical world, which is what the sensor is actually trying to measure. But on the other side, you've got the limitations of the actual this the actual device used to make those measurements. So in 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 um, lidar, what you're using is you're using a, an, an emitter, which is an infrared emitter, and then you're using a, a you know I'm I'm going to use I'm forget about you know rotating lidar. That, what Waymo is using is archaic. We're going to use we're going to talk about something called SPAD lidar, which is a special kind of lidar that uses um it works similar to a camera. Except for uh, it actually is it, it's actually it's actually like a camera, but it has the additional advantage of being able to measure the amount of time it takes uh, to to for the light for the photon to be emitted and detected. So what happens is the sensor for a SPAD sensor is just like a camera sensor, but it's the orders of magnitude faster. So it can actually be used to measure the amount of time it takes a photon to travel a certain distance, okay? So with the SPAD LiDAR, which is pretty sure what the Chinese are using in their in their latest car that everyone's talking about, that LiDAR will give you a point cloud. Now the point cloud's usually lower resolution than, than you can get with a spinning LiDAR. And it's dependent on, just like a spinning LiDAR, it's dependent on you actually emitting a photon and measuring the amount of time it takes for that photon to come back. So what are you dependent on with a, with a LIDAR then? Well, you're if you're going through fog, right? The photon has to go through the fog, bounce off the object, and come back through the fog to be received. So it's enter it total the total energy is significantly reduced because a lot of photons don't make the trip. Okay, so they, they get lost either on the way out or they get they don't get reflected 
or they get lost on the way back. So the amount of energy is significantly reduced because it's a round trip. Now with cameras, you know, if you have other lighting sources, then you don't have that problem. Now, obviously, if you're on a dark road in the middle of nowhere with heavy fog, then you're dependent on the headlights. So you have the same problem. So LiDAR and radar or LiDAR and cameras have the same problem. Now, why do people want to use LiDARs? Because it is, in fact, a crutch. It is a lot easier to process a point cloud from a, a point cloud from a LiDAR than it is to process images from a camera. The LiDAR gives you uh, actually gives you 3D information in a point cloud, whereas the camera, you have to infer the 3D information. Now, then why not just use LiDAR? Well, because you still need cameras to be able to read road signs, to be able to read the writing, uh, you know, the writing on the road. And you still need a camera for, for other things that LiDAR can't be used for, mainly being able to read, uh, read uh, information outside, seeing signs, stuff like that, and being able to you know, determine what kind of sign is it. Now, in Korea, apparently they're working on changing the shapes of signs so that you can use LiDAR to sort of, quote, read the sign. But again, that, that requires changing of the infrastructure for the self-driving system. And that's not something that, that's not something that most people are going to want to do. You want the car, you want the self-driving system to work with the same infrastructure as a human would have to work with. At least during this transition, maybe in 30 years, you know, we'll rebuild the roads so they only work with self-driving cars, but that's that's a long way off. So so that's why you have you have to have cameras anyway. So must point is that look, I have to have cameras anyway. And LIDAR has a lot of the same limitations as the camera. The only difference is the amount of compute I have to throw at it. And you know what? According to Moore's law, compute's cheap. So that's why now, do I think that the RoboTaxi is going to get released without Another sensor? No. And there are other sensors that could be used, and I'll save that for another video.